The uh, New York most wanted list, mm. you know, the FBI's most wanted list, the Marshall, U.S. Marshals most wanted list. I got like 95 years total, you know, all total. You know? mm -hmm. and, uh, I had three 25 years since and 20 years since running consecutive. Mm. Wow. Right. You know? okay. And, um, you know, those offenses I was convicted. You know, I went to trial and was convicted of uh, 10 murder and two police and of uh, some bank robbery offenses. I went to trial and all that. You right. Know what I mean? It took me 15 years to like get some shit ran concurrently, you know, get some shit thrown out. You know what I'm saying? Right. And uh, eventually I made parole under the old law. Right. This is Dave Dash, the chairman of the board of the Chamber of Flavor Link DVD. Get money, I'm gonna get a fight. Right from Dash. <laughs> Cause Big, Big, is, Big's like yeah. Big's is quiet, man. But honestly, he's not that quiet. Mm -hmm. But he's always observing everything that goes on. Mm -hmm. He has really good ideas. All the platinum came from Big. He's the one that got the platinum. The iceberg came from Big. Uh -huh. All that four point, what four point six is? Yeah, four point six. All that Big's was the first one on the block with a four point. Let me tell you, oh. Big came up on the block with a four point six. In a platinum Rolex and hurt both of us. Me and Jay was in the heart. Ah, like, oh, man. Because, you know, we always had a friendly competition, you know, against right, each other. So, right. you know, he can't have something I ain't having. So that meant I had to spend 35 grand on a fucking watch. You right. know what I'm saying? I, I didn't want the 4.6. That was on him. But Vince came up with a lot of that new shit. See, a lot of cats don't know that. Yeah, that was on me. Like, you let folks know. Chris Now, know. all that. Oh. Vince was the first to drink the Chris. He's the one that bought it. Like, Jay was like our ambassador. Right. And I ain't going to say Vince came with everything. But collectively, all our ideas, we talked to Jay, Jay put it in the rhyme, both put that on the press. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's how it went down. We just talked about all the fly shit we was doing. I'd be sick of being asked the same questions, because of course, I'm not trying to sound like a bitch ass nigga, and be really like, all right, I don't like this, I don't like that, I don't like this, fuck this, fuck that, like right. that's not me, you know what I'm saying? So if I'm on the radio, I'll be like, everything's good. You know right. what I'm saying? Because I just, you know, where I'm from, it's not really cool to be doing that shit. Yeah, you're right. But to a degree, I feel like we do have to be honest. You know, I ain't gonna hide nothing. I think what we've done was fucked up, you know? How do you right. feel about the state of hip hop now that the South seems like they're taking over? Beautiful. Evolution. It's whatever, man. How do you feel about the state of Rockefeller right now? Me? I wish it could be what it was, but what unfortunately... What is it now? I don't hear about what it was. What is it now? It's, that's, it's a fucking joke. It's not right. It's, it's not, not right. right. So, that's it. That's, you know what I'm saying? Like How you feel about the state of Rockefeller right now? Like, how it is? Because when it was y'all... I think it was strong. I think it's strong. It's I think niggas is wet. Right. Like, Kanye's hot. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But ain't nobody really else... I, I, I don't even know who on rock. Like, Petey probably gonna, gonna drop something on rock. Whatever than that, like, Hov gotta come out. Yeah, yeah. But they ain't doing really no, no a lot of numbers, you saying, like, niggas ain't It ain't even numbers, because it ain't about numbers on the streets, you know? Right. Niggas on the street don't give a fuck how much you sell. Niggas on the street be like, yo, that shit hot. Yeah. So you still cool with both of the old hands from Rockefeller? Love them both. Okay. Why wouldn't I? All right, all right. Just want to clear that up, because you know how some people can say people think take people taking sides and all that stuff. I'm a shit. man. Like, that's right. I mean, I don't go from pillar to post. All right. You know what I'm saying? All right. I don't do that. And I never choose between my friends. Um, I had got the double XL and shit, like, and they got everybody down there that's, you know, that's down with Jay, like, you know what I'm saying? Or whatever. And I ain't see y'all. Y'all the only two cats. I ain't down with Jay. Okay. So you said me, you or him. Ain't down with Jay. No, no. Okay. So, like, that's my old head still. Right, right. right. I know, like, yeah. I don't want no record deal. You don't want no record deal. You want your own shit. Uh, my own shit. Right, right. Okay. All right, so, like, like, what's your relationship with like with Dame and and like? Cause Dame, I see him in your in your video. I mean, your Dame like my shit. Dame like my lovey. Like, yeah. Flat out. Like fuck music, fuck practice. I love him. Like, you know what I'm saying? I know worst come worst, he can give me anything I want. Like you know what I'm saying? Right. That's the realest nigga like I met in the game. Yeah, I got my own label popping off state property records. Me, official first artist on my own label. I got the off label. Uh huh. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, you got any more artists you want to bring out anything? Yeah, I got a couple. Uh, my first artist I'm, I'm working with going to be uh, Murder Mel. I'm taking it back from day one. Hey, what's up? So, you and Bean still all right? Hey, like, or. I mean, I just spoke to him in a while. Well, from the last time, y'all was all right, though. Yeah. Okay. 
So you just saying y'all just don't converse like that. Yeah, like I'm, I need mean my own shit. Right? Yeah, you just doing, you just doing you. So you know how we got your whole team of niggas or whatever. Yeah. What y'all gonna do? Y'all getting ready to go win? We sneaking. Yeah. We, we preparing now, like for war. Right we already got shit brewing, got shit done. Like we just need the whole thing. How many cats you got on the team? It's like seven. Well, well, okay. we stay proper all y'all group or what's up with you? Yeah, I mean, like, when I went to jail, everybody really, like, parted and did they separate the thing because that's what they had to do. There wasn't no guarantee that I was going to get out of jail. First and foremost, the team that we had inside the party was strong. And then we had a extended family with the Marcy crew. And then we also had cats from the Northside Project. So you know what I'm saying? So if it got real thick, we didn't really have to do nothing. We had to do make a phone call. Okay, and cats is coming. You know, the guns is my thing. You know what I'm saying? You know, the event they ain't really took place. You know what I'm saying? And it came to them to them handlers. You know what I'm saying? Right. My whole team was thinking niggas. You know what I'm saying? And he had loyal niggas. He had right. strong niggas with him. We had the whole hood lock, you know what I'm saying? No exceptions, if you wasn't fucking with us, you know what I'm saying? You wasn't getting no money, and that's just how it was. I ain't supposed to shut this down. Like he said, I'm a gunman. Right, he was definitely one of them brothers who was running things. Um, he put in his work if he had to put in his right. work. So he was definitely a nigga that stood out, man, you know what I mean? And, and then when I got a chance to meet him, he just he respected the school, you know what I right. mean? Like he's a real, real down to earth, genuine yeah. real nigga. Saying, climb Plato, an important part in this shit down here, you know what I'm saying? Basically, it was black mafia. Basically, that because niggas was dressing up, putting it in. I have a goes. Niggas know the real story with the time and like Calvin Klein. So, uh, if you're watching this DVD, and obviously, you appreciate who he is as an individual. Now, this man is taking off with Jay Z might have stepped off, keeping it real with the hood, coming back to the hood, but not only that, but getting back to the hood, and that's what gangsta really is. So when they was going, no, 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 
I just watched another shot. <laughs> so then it grazed my boy's leg, went in and out of his leg, and then it hit my brother. And it hit my brother like, my brother got like 25 stitches in his leg right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, he was in an hospital. He was fucked up. Yeah. I took the, I took the, um, I looked at him and saw both of them fall. And I was like, oh shit. You know what I'm saying? So I ran, I ran, I ran and put an incinerator and took the gun and I threw it in the incinerator and then I ran into the apartment over here. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I was about like 21 when I came out, you know, from doing a bid. I was up in Elmira and I was in Kaksaki, you know, just, you know, I mean, you know how it goes, doing my time and to come home. And then now after being away, you got to come out here to try to make things happen. It just so, um, just so happened that when I came home in that time, it was the era of the crack game, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, from that point on, I got to, I got to, I got to go through a visual of seeing how the community and how the hood then changed up and try to form into that system. So right. once I did that and I someone got my little formula down, and then I just said, you know, I got to do what I got to do, you know what I'm saying? Right. Take my stance on the hood, you know? Around the time when you was doing your thing in the project, you know what I'm saying, what influenced you to, to get into the street life, like, you know what I'm saying? What what had you go forth? Was it, was it people out in the street that you seen doing their thing, or you, you want to just go ahead and do your own thing and come off like that? You know, what I mean, made you want to want to get money. I feel, I mean, you, you grow into it. You know what I'm right. saying? You know, you go through you go through the stages. You know what I mean? When I was 14 years old, I was doing things. You know, away right. from you know, away from the norm. So you know, going out there. First you robbing, first you stealing, and then, you know, it's a process, you know, you go through them stages and then you start to stepping it up, you know what I'm saying, in another level. And then, like I said, I did my first bid, I got locked up when I was about like 15, 16, caught my bid, went upstate when I was 17 and a half, going on, you know, going on 18, and I came home when I was 21, you know what I mean? Like I said, I went to Elmira, I went to Kaksaki, I went upstate in 84, and I came home and actually in 86. So, you know, once I came home, I saw how, you know, how things have actually changed. You know, dudes that was my age when I was like 17, 18 years old, they, you know, they, they doing their thing. Right. So, you know, I mean, I, I just, like I said, I just fell, I just fell back in, I just fell back in, back in the step, I guess, right. you know? So, during the time that you started, you know what I mean, we, uh, we doing my homework, you know what I mean, like, they said you got with a cat named uh, Sha Ru, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You want to elaborate on how you got there, got with him, and what influence he had on you in your street, in your street life? For half my projects, Half of Red Hook got locked up, like 82, 83, you know what I'm saying? And mostly everybody went upstate, 83, 84, and a lot of kids, a lot of cats came home around 86. Right before that, we were stick up kids, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I mean, we could, we could go back into when, when we robbed the, um, when, when, when we robbed the F train. I was 14 years old, Shabu, remember when we, remember when we went? Nigga, you wanna rock the motherfucking train? You yes, crazy? yes, motherfucking right. Nigga, nigga, yes, 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 n
Shit, my crew is half the projects, you know what I'm saying? You know, my crew is like, you know, half the people that was out here that was doing what they was doing. You know, you had you had separate people, you know, and at the same time they was doing their thing and they held it down. You know, but at the end of the day, you know, you gotta have somebody as one person to try to form an alliance with each other. And some people didn't really understand that. So now you gotta put your foot on some of them, put some of their necks in order for them to understand that yo, I'm not trying to, you from my hood, so I'm not trying to go to war with you or nothing like that but I'm trying, but if I have to because you won't pay attention to what's happening right. you know then I got to do what I got to do right. for the most part this is our hood I don't want nobody that don't live out here coming out here you know what I'm saying you know doing what they doing you know bad enough we destroying our people but I don't want nobody else coming out here to do it right okay so the story was he had a plan like yo you know I got this dude man we get some, we get some paper called the meeting in the hood, you know what I mean? Right. Now half of these niggas in the hood got to come to this meeting. If they don't come to this meeting, we're gonna shut them niggas down. Right. That's how the attitude we have. All right, I'm with you, fam. This is what you want to do. Because it's already, you. I didn't mean to cut you off, it's already existing crew in It's the already project. existing in the project okay. already. Right. So right. he's like, damn, what's going on in this hood? Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Damn, we can do this too. So right. he always, anybody that's getting money, he got to get money too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That table too. You know what I'm saying? It's like, damn, I ain't. They call a little meme, gather up a couple of dope. Mm -hmm. I mean, what you see, part of this right here. Right. You understand what I'm saying? So, what it was, the idea worked. Mm -hmm. Well, he had loyal niggas. He had right. strong niggas with him. Mm -hmm. All right, so shut this down. Like he said, I'm a gunman. Right. You understand? I like beating niggas up all day. That's my job. Mm -hmm. That's what I do. Okay. You know I mean, far as me hand in hand and all that shit and doing that, I mean, that's not me. Right. You, you know just had a saying? part to play and you play it. That's right. Saying, you know what I mean? So, that's what they see, how he really. How I seen it got into it. Oh, okay. So yeah. how the other how the other niggas take to that? You know what I'm saying? Y'all doing that? I mean, they ain't have no choice. They had no choice. Oh, okay. no choice. So that, it wasn't even no war, nothing, <coughs> no shit like that. It was war. Oh, okay. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. You know what I mean? They told me one time gather gather 15 dudes, 20 dudes. All right. I got about 20, 30 right. dudes. Mm -hmm. All right. Just snatch everybody's shit up, and what you got, you keep that. Mm -hmm. I paid the little niggas here. We gonna go just every block and just, yo, just mm -hmm. take shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mr. Klein said, um, that niggas are dead. You know what I mean? That's how we uh, running. You know what I mean? Niggas okay. like, what? I held a meeting with all those who I knew were stick up niggas. Those who I knew was thorough enough to go at other niggas, whether what group or what crew they was in, it didn't matter. You know, the consequences to them, they didn't give a fuck. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I told them to throw it all for me. Yo, I said rob everybody, the whole projects. Shut the whole projects down. Everybody, nobody is exempt from this robbery right now. Rob the whole hood and tell them I did it. Tell them I sent it. And from that point on, all the dudes that was in position, I was getting phone calls by like, yo, what's going on? Something happened? Yeah, something happened. <laughs> Hell yeah, you got them right, something happened. Right. You know, we got people that don't live in this project trying to get work and trying to make it happen and trying to like do their thing out here. That ain't a good look, homie. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You know, this is this is not whoever's going to school, you need to stay in school, you need to go to school, you need to do your thing. You know what I'm saying? Because if this is not for you, you know what I mean? I'm gonna either die or I'm going to jail. You know what I'm saying? That was my whole theory of everything. How did you get with Danny? You know what I'm saying? How did you meet him? And how did y'all, you know, click up like? You know what I'm saying? Well, a long time ago, you know, when you go from one hood to the next and you're trying to form your name for yourself, you know, you hear different people's names. So I'm hearing Danny's names back in the days, you know, and then that's unfortunate on his part that he wound up getting locked up and he had to do like a little bit over five years or whatever. So for us to not see each other, that was like the cause of it because he wound up going to do his bid and I wound up going to do my bid. But when I came home, you know, he was trying to come through Red Hook, you know what I'm saying, you know, put his mark down, you know what I'm saying, lay his, lay his fingers down on the hood because he was doing his thing elsewhere, doing other thing. When I bumped into Danny, I had just came back to Red Hook because I was hustling in Coney Island. Mm -hmm. And I had just came back to Rock Hook, Red Hook and started doing my thing out of Red Hook. And I had gotten to a little altercation. And when I got into the altercation, I had stabbed the person up. I had blood all over my clothes. And then when I came around the corner after the little altercation, Danny, Supreme, and Chanel was coming around the corner as well. So when they saw me, 
You know, they pulled out their hammers and everything like, yo, you know what I'm saying? Yo, what's going on? Clown, what's up? What's up? What's up? I said, nah, yo. You know, that's when I was going hand to hand then. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, yo, this fucking crackhead just tried to beat me for five jumps, man. I ain't going for that shit. You crazy? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I was zoned out. I was like, I was mad as a motherfucker nigga tried to beat me for five. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So... You know, that, and that was just like my quick, immediate reaction, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's like when, when a nigga tried to beat me for him, I pulled out a knife and just started stabbing him up. Mm -hmm. And um, Danny was like, yo, man, I like this nigga, you know what I'm saying? Like, Danny told me, like, yo, go upstairs, change your clothes, come back downstairs, throw all your shit in the center right now. I was like, yo, I'm on parole, homie. I'm, I'm on a run. I'm out of here, you know what I'm saying? Like, that type of shit, you know what I'm yeah. saying? <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> You know, I wind up coming downstairs, hollering at the homie for a minute. Yeah. And um, the shit he said, man, made me stay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yo, if my P.O. catch me, he just gonna catch me. Whatever, it is what it is, you know? But um, I wound up being like, I, I hate to say an overnight success though, man, but in less than 24 hours, man, I was at a, I was at a joint, man. I went yeah. from, I went from, 28 grams fucking with him, you know what I'm saying? On some like coming at him on some consistency shit. Cause I was like, yo, all I need is a consistent nigga to keep up with me, man. You know what I'm saying? Cause I can pop this shit off. I can make it happen because I got the right niggas that's gonna go 24 hours with me, you know what I'm saying? We're gonna hold the block down, you know what I mean? We're gonna hold our little, you know, do our little movement, get our numbers up. So once that happened, like I went from Danny to like from from 62 to call a nigga like an hour later to like, yo, I need a buck and a quarter. From a buck and a quarter, I kept my flip going. So like two or three hours later, I call him back and like, yo, I need a 250 to like a half a joint. And then when I got to about like three or four o'clock, like, like three or four o'clock, maybe a little later than that in the morning, mm -hmm. you know, I went at the nigga and told a nigga like, from the half, I should be getting like a, a, a joint at you, like about like by 12 noon or something like that, you know? And uh, he was like, yo, where are you doing this at? So I was like, under my building, you know what yeah. I'm saying? You know, that type of shit. So he's like, yo, homie, don't you, don't you know you got a gold mine? And like, I got the Sha Rules, the KPs, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, and then it's like, it grew into like having like L, Mike, you know what I'm saying, J Rock. Manny, you know what I'm saying? Like, having like, Rob, Black, my whole crew. Like, I mean, I'm forming a crew right before my eyes. You feel what I'm saying? Like, niggas are starting to look at me on some like, yo, I believe in this nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, this nigga, like, and, and, and like, hold up. In less than like, no time, you got to acknowledge me now. You know, you, you looking at, you, when you was looking at everybody else and you wasn't paying, you wasn't paying attention, you know what I'm saying? Now it's like, you know, the light shining over here in this corner over here. And like, yo, who that in that corner? Like, yo, that's Klein. Oh man. Who don't let this nigga in? Mm -hmm. You feel me? When something happened like that, you know, somebody gonna somebody gonna come back and say, well look, I ain't going for it. They just gonna have to do what they gotta do. But they ain't have no choice because the team is strong. First and foremost, the team that we had inside the project was strong. And then we had a extended family with the Marcy crew. And then we also had cash from Woodside Project. So you know what I'm saying? So if it got real thick, we ain't really had to do nothing. We had to do was make a phone call and, and cash is coming. And they had any business. So he was tight. Oh. And like back when he was saying with the meeting and everything, you know, we had the men, and that was the first time we got introduced to my wet. And we had the big move by the pool, you know, cash from um, just that west side, they popping bottles and everything. That's how Klein got his new name, the Godfather. You know, oh, he started okay. calling him the Godfather after that. Right. It's that nigga Top Gunner, AKA Big Love for Marcy. You know what I'm saying? I'm here chopping it up with my dudes, the prankster. You know what I'm saying? And Big Up, you know what I'm saying? You know, we in Marcy right now. You know, this where it all started. You know what I'm saying? Danny was that dude. You know what I'm saying? We had a lot of crankies coming up that died for this shit. You know what I'm saying? And we put in a lot of work. You know what I'm saying? And one of our crankies, you know what I'm saying, that was out here putting it in with us was Klein. You know what I'm saying? You know, right here, we started out banging out. You know what I'm saying? Doing our thing. Basically, you know what I'm saying? We had the whole hood locked. You know what I'm saying? No exceptions. If you wasn't fucking with 
us. You know what I'm saying? You wasn't getting no money, and that's just how it was. Despite what you heard on the records and all that, we had this. You know what I'm saying? And every now and then, you know, it was work that needed to be put in that we couldn't put in. And that's when Klein stepped in. You know what I'm saying? Son came down. You know, he was like dead. You know what I'm saying? He came down. He got a lot of money down here with us. You know what I'm saying? And he put a lot of work in. You know what I'm saying? In any event, basically, like, that's what we did, you know what I'm saying? Coming up down here, you know what I'm saying? Klein played a, an important part in this shit down here, you know what I'm saying? Basically, it was black mafia. Basically that. Because niggas was dressing up, putting it in, however it goes. Niggas know the real story with the time it really is, you know what I mean? And um, Klein, you know, he represented both parts, Marcy and motherfucking the hook, you know? But, um, man, you know, street shit, you know, regular shit. We got Goes stories down. for days, you know what I'm saying? For months, for years, you know what I'm saying? About how we used to put it in, you know what I'm saying? Go we put it in on both the ends. the motherfucking Audi with the motherfucking, like, he had four tens and shit banging on. Real. You know, to the motherfucking 318. You know, to the BM, you know what I'm saying? And, um... We was doing it big, you know what I'm saying? You know, niggas had big money, big cars. We had all the bras, you know what I'm saying? And um, Klein was a big dude, you know what I'm saying? You know, that's why we on here representing Klein because only a representative can represent a representative, you know what I'm saying? So that's what we doing right now, you know what I'm saying? Um, Basically, you know, we used to be right here, as a matter of fact, on the second floor, right there. See the three windows? One, two, three. That was one of our spots, you know what I'm saying? We started out here. You know, the gun game was official. For all y'all out there that know us, you know what I'm saying? You already know. I ain't even got to go there right now. The but, other um, side where the other guys don't walk too much. Uh, Believe that, uh, dog. You know what I'm saying? This is Marcy. You know what I'm saying? Marcy Houses, you know what I'm saying? The city motherfucking built it. And we made it, you know what I'm saying, right. to what it is today. Just like I said, despite what you heard on the records before, look, you know, whatever, you know, we the dudes that put it in, you know what I'm saying? And Calvin Klein played a big part in this, you know what I'm saying? You know, respect to the G all exactly. day, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? You know, um, it's nothing but love for Sun down here, you know what I'm but, saying? Uh, you know, niggas still got love, you know what I mean? And um, we still out here, still doing it, you know what I'm saying? The same thing. There's a lot of things that change, but we ain't changed, you know what I mean? The players is gonna always remain the same, believe that, you know what I'm saying? Matter of fact, let's, let's, let's walk in a little bit so we can show you, you know what I'm saying, a few spots where we was down here putting it in, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, we started right here. You know what I'm saying? This is where it all started at right. from the beginning. We started lane. out Big the, the lane. You see the basketball court. You know what I'm saying? That's Nostrum Avenue down there. You know what I'm saying? This is Marcy Avenue. And um, we had all this shit locked down, like I said. You know what I'm saying? Why y'all move from right here to down here? All right, well, actually, right, we, 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 we just we, changed location. Yeah, that's it. That's you know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. You know. Hey, remind you, we, you see this grass right here? Show the grass. That grass, niggas used to stash plenty of motherfucking rappers. I mean, from, <laughs> man, from shotguns to whatever, four, four fish. Um, 40s wasn't out back then, so, you know, niggas had the fish, the motherfucking nines, the rattles, the max. All of it, you know? Niggas, niggas had tips on their lives on this end. I mean, it's every hood shit, you know how it go, ain't nothing shit. Exactly. Just big it up for our dude, you know? Yeah. It's just one whole it side is on the gavel, but this, for the live niggas. This Marcy side, this Nostra side. Right. right when we started that, that's what separates that. But All see, right. the difference is this as well, you know? Nigga like Klein, he get love on his end, you know? A lot of niggas don't get no love like that. A lot of niggas come through here and almost get their wig pushed back, you know? Yeah. When times has changed, you know? It's in the whole never ever, and um, man, basically, yeah. niggas just I'm living, you dig? I mean, it ain't like, like how it was back then. Uh, Not at all. Yeah, this is another spot right here. After we stopped, after we, after we, we, we popped off right here, we changed. You know what I'm saying? Things got a little hot over there, so we had to move. We, 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 oh yeah. Right here, it was a bench. It was benches right here. Remind first. you also, this is another spot right here. On oh, the second, word, the second the spot right here. We had this spot too. You know what I'm saying? Right here. Plus. 
Wise used to live in this building, you know what I'm saying? Wise, Fonzo, you know what I'm saying? And we used to have him holding hammers, and when shit jumped off, we used to run around the corner right there, you know what I'm saying? Around this corner before all this fence shit was here, we used to run around the corner, and he used to drop Max out the window and shotties out the window for us, you know what I'm saying? And we had tear down, hit niggas off, and they run back in the building with our hammers, you know what I'm saying? That's how we was putting it in. We used to be right here, popping off, you know, you know, the, the regular thing, you know what I'm saying? You know, shit the hood do, you know what I mean? Hey, yo, Clyde, remember this one, you know, uh, uh, we had we had drama with this kid, uh, you know, I don't really want to mention no names, but I think it's pulled out two max and, and, and back me down right here, you know? Duke was playing for his life and shit, you know, Clyde, he'd probably catch a flashback from it. Him and Danny made um, DWD, DVW, actually. Saying, and when and it was on, chased a lot of niggas the fuck up out of here. Yeah, so. and you know who you is a lot That's of live <laughs> niggas, not no chumps, because we ain't get strikes for that. We chased and a lot, lot of live niggas from out of here. Nigga, Y'all know. This ain't no local shit here, man. It's, it's, I mean, you know, nigga go worldwide with this thing. It's, it's no secret, you know? Like yeah. I said again, record speak for itself. Basically, that. High, you know? We was individually thorough niggas, you know right. what I'm saying? So when you put like a group of thorough niggas together, you feel what I'm saying? Like, you know, not not one person make everybody thorough. You know what I'm saying? Everybody was thorough on their own. You know, Mike had his hammer, K had his hammer, L had his hammer, Sha Rule, myself, like and bitches that was fucking with us had their hammers. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, it was it was a thing where it's we don't fuck with you because we don't have to. Right. You know what I'm saying? But I guarantee you, you're not going to fuck with us. Mm -hmm. I promise you that. You feel what I'm saying? Only way you're going to fuck with us is if you don't have no parents. Only way you're gonna not going to fuck with us if you don't have no family you don't care about. Right. Because if you carry it like that, I mean, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Right. Streets is what it is. You know, we ain't playing no games. You know, war is war. We've been there before. You know, and it's not... It's not unfamiliar territory to us mm -hmm. for us to go to war. Because war is wherever it's popping. Yeah, like, wherever it's at. However it go down, it is where it is. And that's where it is. That's what, whatever, whatever. We had options, you know what I'm saying? Either our option was to go in there, take over your hood, you know what I'm saying? Which is a bunch of gunplay, you know? But, oh, we can go in there and play the mind game with you, you know? Still make you feel, or make you still be the boss of your own shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? The only thing I did was just buy you out, homie. I can't control your crew. I don't even want to. Right. But at the end of the day, let's just deal with this situation like this, man, because I'm going to come one way or the other. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'd rather not come the other way, you know what I'm saying? And respectfully, I'd rather come at you like this so you can still show face that you still that nigga out here. I don't want your problems. I just want to eat with you, man. Can I eat with you? From that point on, we started making our rounds around the borough. You know what I'm saying? We we had 33 spots in Brooklyn. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, uh, you, I can't tell you we was making a quarter of a million dollars every two to four days. You feel what I'm saying? And we were just getting it in Red Hook and Marcy. Nah, that's impossible. He's in the crib. So I was in the crib. I was chilling some pine king upstairs, counting some money and all that. So you gonna have to start shaking the dice. Like, what you doing that for? You gonna chew some dice? So I'm like, yeah, nigga, let's chew some dice. So we in the room, close the door, just getting all up in them. We bet, I don't know how much we start our chump chain that first. Boom, boom, boom. Took about like five G from him. He went in the bag, got some more money. Bet the five. <clears throat> Crack. <laughs> took that. Yo, I, I took about like forty thousand from him. And God bless his dad. Money, right? Manny came right. upstairs. He was like, yo, go get me some more money. <laughs> he was like, I just gave you all this money. He was like, yo, go get me some more money. Manny ran out. So while he was waiting for the money, he had the motorcycle downstairs. Yo, buy my bike. So I gave him money for the bike. He threw me the keys. Took that money for him. He has a chain on. Yo. <laughs> he was like, you ain't quitting. So I took the chain from him. So I'm sitting there laughing. You sitting there for more money? But you know, I know I wasn't just gonna leave without giving him a chance to win his money back. That's right. just how we do. 
So you know, Manny came back that 5G, like bet the 5G, them dice turned around, lost all that back. Damn. But he gave me the bike though, he said, yeah. the bike though. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we hey, for hours, he won't let me leave. <laughs> 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 man, yo, damn. Yeah, the ball that day though, that's something uh, we never forget. We always talk about that when we get up. I had stopped counting my money at one time, you know what I'm saying? You know, I was counting it on, on money machines, I was counting and weighing my money on scales, you know what I'm saying? So I see this gold 535 sitting there with a soul sign on it. He took my yo get it. I said, come on, man, you took my get it, man. Stop playing with me cracking around. Right? <laughs> he was like, yo, it's mine. I said, yo, stop playing, man. This is what these people call it. <laughs> man, get it, yo. This is mine, yo. We gonna be chilling. He's sitting there, I'm like, yeah, right, nigga, you playing around these people call. He like, yo, come on, call me. You went inside the office, dude said, you ready to take your car? He's like, nah, there's snow on the ground. Soon the snow get up, I'm coming to get mine. Whoa. <laughs> Next thing you know, we chill up in the 535. Oh, that's Take a little store. We went to a lot of stores and, you know, we was dropping stacks on the counter and they just locking the doors, shutting the doors down. And uh, I mean, prime example of one video that Jay did when he walked up in the store and he pointed out all the sneakers and yeah. the whole rack and all that. That's exactly what yeah. we were doing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We've been doing that. You know, that's uh, like, you know, prime yeah. example of, you know what I mean, what it was. I was making a personal orders. Uh, when Nike, Reebok, and like Timberlands and whatever was out, um, Champion hoodies and all that other stuff. I was dealing with them companies directly through pro lines mm -hmm. So if I wanted to get a certain Make of Nikes that Jordan had or something like that or whatever. We was rocking shit that nobody had mm -hmm. You know because we was dealing with the company direct mm -hmm. He was not wearing the same pair of sneakers twice. Mm -hmm. I would I would I would go <laughs> shopping and buy 20 boxes I would get a van and had the van bring all have them have the store bring all my stuff out to the van. You know what I'm saying? And I would I would snatch up a couple of people that was from the hood and I would tell them if it was springtime, I would take all my winter gear and tell them like, yo, clear my whole closet out, take everything. You can have everything. All my shoes, all my sneakers, all my coats and everything. Take everything. You can have everything. Cause I had a whole new line of shit coming in. You know what I'm saying? And we had one little little, little nigga that all of us had Call Hungry, you know what I'm saying? That was our nick that was the nickname that we had for him. And he was a little homeless dude, but he was getting high at, you know what I'm saying, at this time, but he was like really young. Hungry was from Manhattan, but he was doing his little hustle, you know, hitting the stomach and at every red light, you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, hungry, hungry, hungry. You know, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, you know, like, well, hungry was hustling us got like a the fuck money. though, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was giving Hungry like. You got a lot of money from us. Man. I sit in the pocket like this and hit Hungry like 500. I was like, yo, here. Because I felt bad for him, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Because I really like to be honest with you. At first, I didn't know Hungry was getting hot. I just thought Hungry got kicked out of his crib and got a bad situation. So until one of y'all told me, <laughs> one of y'all told me, Hungry, like, yo. Yo, hungry fucking get high, man. <laughs> like, yo, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, yo, you can't be serious. I mean, I'm talking about even when it was summertime. I don't give a fuck who I'm with. I get out the car, I see hungry. I done went to White Castles, McDonald's, Wendy's. I done, I done was like, yo, we getting ready to drive through Atlantic Avenue. Yo, my man hungry. I know I'm going to see him. So, yeah, like, yo, we can be in the car. Five, ten niggas in different cars. Like, all of us, they like, yo, where you going? They already know once we hit the drive throughs yo, niggas got to go buy shit for hungry. You know what I'm saying? So we go get hungry mad shit. And when hungry see us, Hungry could be like this at somebody's car. <laughs> Soon as Hungry see our shit, <laughs> you know, that yo, Hungry running, <laughs> fuck that car. Hungry running to what our car, <laughs> you know, was, fuck that shit. And yo, you know what's crazy? It's like, Hungry must have had a sensor on us or something because no matter what car we was in, if we switched up on Hungry, Hungry smelt us or something <laughs> because every time we came around and we was a half a block from where Hungry usually do his thing at, Hungry be like this. <laughs> Hungry see us, I'm telling you. You know what I'm saying? Hungry start running to our car. He go back to back. What up, man? What up? I hit him off. I drive past him. Ella hit him off. Ella drive past him. 
And they keep going down the line to hungry. And then when hungry see a car that ain't familiar, hungry like, fuck y'all, I'm straight, you know what I'm saying? My little crew just came through and set me straight. I got like two G's in my pocket, you know what I'm saying? And food from all the restaurants. You know what I'm saying? So you know, that was like, and like that was my little man. Homie, wherever you at, we holler at your boy, man. You know what I'm saying? You know, Klein, an older brother, know, right, you know right. what I'm saying? He from Red Hook, right. he from out here. Right. Like, did you hear some, you know, what you heard? A lot, like, a lot, of, a lot, of, a lot of things, man, you know what I mean? Like, I was in the street yeah. when I was young. I was, in the, I was in the junior division at that point, at that okay. time. You know okay. what I mean? I was, still a, I was still a junior, you know right. what I mean? And um, I ain't yet graduate, but like all young niggas, you know who's who, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And um, he was definitely, I used to see him, like at events and shit like that, and you know what I mean? And, you know, the big chains and the cars and all yeah. that, you know what I mean? So he was definitely a nigga that stood out, man, you know what I mean? And, and then when I got a chance to meet him, he just was a respectable dude, you know what I right. mean? Like, all, all 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 real niggas that I ever ran, came up under or even ran into, whether it be the penitentiary or the street, was all respectable niggas, you know what right, I mean? Right. Humble niggas and about their business, about their work, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I ain't got nothing but good things to say about them, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, like... During the time that you met him, did you did you already hear about Klein or, or or his movement or what he was doing on the street? Yeah, I mean, there was guys out of his neighborhood that would definitely talk about him and talk about him highly. Um, and, and you know, his name stood out. He had one of those names that that would stand out. It was just just was in just was in my area. You know, so I grew up with him. You know saying you know. Uh, at one point, that was my man, you know what I'm saying? Right now, you know, he wrestling right now, too, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, unfortunately, you know, but right now, he, um, he wound, he wound up doing his thing. Actually, just was like one of the main parties that paved the way, really, you know what I'm saying? Because when the, when the crack era came in, in like 84, most of all the dudes that come from his cloth, all of us got locked up, you know what I'm saying? It was like then they a sweep for the most part, where like so many of us got locked up that grew up with him. So he had to kind of like take on the hood on his own, you know, and I, and I, and I, and I compliment him for doing such a great job. After once I built and established that relationship with Danny, it took a minute because me and Just was close. You know what I'm saying? And Danny had a little beef with Just. So when when the beef that Danny was dealing with Just with, my thing was that me and Just, me and Just wasn't partners or me and Just wasn't breaking bread. We wasn't getting no bread with each other. I started messing with Danny and started getting bread with him. So now my thing was this. Danny, I'm associating myself with you. But one thing I'm not, I'm not a snake, you know what I'm saying? And I ain't no rat nigga, you know what I'm saying? So if you got beef with Just, I can make one instant phone call and Just as a man will meet you. You feel what I'm saying? I'm asking you to leave that alone, you know what I'm saying? Like any other issue that I might have with a nigga that you fuck with, you might ask me to leave it alone. I'm asking you to leave that alone, man. You feel what I'm saying? And on the strength for me, he left it alone. Um, how did, how did your man Danny die? Like, you know? Danny died on his way to, um, from, from D.C. to Virginia, uh -huh. take care of some business out there. Uh -huh. He was racing, he had a Pathfinder, he was racing another Pathfinder, and then, um, you know, he had made a sudden turn. When he made the sudden turn, he hit, he hit the tip of something, and his truck flipped over on him about, like, five, six times. Mm. And in the course of it flipping over, he went out the sunroof. Mm and he cut his neck on the way out. You know what I'm saying? You know, he fractured his skull, you know what I'm saying? Caught like a, a lot of mad major injuries, you know what I'm saying? Cause like naturally when you fly out the window, you're gonna fly up kind of high, you know right. what I'm saying? A whole bunch of other things gonna happen to you when you come down. But uh, on his way, and, and actually throughout the course of all them injuries, my dude was still strong enough to be able to stand up. You know what I'm saying? And when he stood up, the doctors really said that that was the, that was the last stroke for him though because it took all his energy out of him then he went back down. He still was living at that point and he died on the, on his way going to the hospital when they flew him up in the air to try to get him to the hospital to try to save him. He died on his way out, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Right. I believe it was like in 88 when she got killed. Right. But um, I was locked up for a murder charge then at the time and uh, I was reading a newspaper. And while reading the newspaper, I saw the whole scene being played out in the newspaper on what happened to this girl and her son. But I knew my cousin was from Fort Greene, you know, and it, and it was speaking about her name and her kid's name and everything, but it was talking about they was from Bushwick. Mm. But what had happened was she was babysitting um, somebody's crib in Bushwick, and her boyfriend came over to the crib, 
and she told him that she was gonna go visit the kid's father to take the kid to go visit the father mm -hmm. in the jail. I'll leave the father's name anonymous, right. but most people, everybody know who homie is, right. you know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, homie got mad, he was jealous, and he went into like a jealous rage. He went and started stabbing the baby up. Mm -hmm. So naturally, the mother's gonna go and help his sister kid. Mm -hmm. So he turned around and started stabbing him up, her up. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And um, after that, he left, came back with a bucket of gasoline and set them both on fire and killed them. You know? mm -hmm. So, you know, I mean, unfortunately, homie in jail, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Fortunately, he should have been taken out on the streets, you know what I mean? And dealt yeah. the right way, but, you know what I'm saying? You know, um, you know, some niggas slip through the cracks sometimes, right, you know right, what I'm saying? Right. What, where you was at, like, when the first time you met Klein, you came in town y'all, I had a chance to talk or whatever. Um, um, we was a C74 together. And, um, I think we was in, um, two up or something like that. But, um, you know, we was all adolescents. Um, I remember Klein being from Red Hook and, um, and me being from Flatbush. So, you know, most of the time when you're in those situations, Brooklyn niggas stay together. Same right. Brooklyn. Queens and Manhattan and Bronx. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it, it, it was obvious that, you know, us as Brooklyn niggas, especially niggas who was running shit at the time, that we, um, you know, that we clicked. Right. And, um, you know, I remember Klein being a brother who was, um, he was sharp. You know, at that time, it wasn't how sharp he was. <clears throat> Mentally, it was how sharp you was physically, right. how sharp you was, and um, your, your, just your physical ability to handle yourself in those situations. Mm -hmm. So um, he was definitely one of them brothers who, who was who was um, who was running things um, in, in C74 as an adolescent. Right. Well, I had a um, murder case, two counts of murder, five counts of possession of weapons. That was a, that was an issue charge, and then um, I got hit with a. a uh, a robbery charge, you know what I'm saying, a bogus robbery charge. Mm -hmm. Then while I see myself possibly not getting, not going home because they was hitting me with charges, it seemed like they almost had me stuck. I was like being very rageful, you know what I'm saying, even while, you know what I'm saying, in the system. So I caught two unnecessary assaults, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, at the same time. So now, if you catch an assault charge in Rikers Island, they send the case up to the Bronx, you know what I'm saying? So now I got two unnecessary Bronx cases that they're they trying to hit me with seven or 21 years on. Mm -hmm. But they was only trying to do that due to the fact that I had the murder charge. Right. And then I had also, I had a, uh, a drug case, and I had, uh, you know, just, you know what I mean, my life was a big fight from that point right. on. You know, Definitely. so once I got, once I went through the trial, actually I went through 10 months, you know what I'm saying, going through the process of getting ready to go to trial for the murder charge. And um, once I went through that, I don't know how much in debt you want me to go, but you know, once I got acquitted for the murder charge, then after 10 months, every other charge dropped, you know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. You know, okay. so pretty much, you know what I'm saying, that was like, that was like the, the, the big stepping stone. It seemed like if I was able to get the murder charge off, then it was easy for me to get all the other charges dismissed. Like, mind you, uh, my man was wrestling with me on the drug charge, so he took the weight on that. You know what I'm saying? The two assaults, I took a plea to two assaults, but it was a misdemeanor charge I took a plea to. Now, mind you, they offered me 7 to 21 while I, heard the, while I had the murder charge, but when the murder charge got dropped, they gave me a plea for 55 days, mm. time served, mm. you know? So, I mean, that was a big difference, you know what I'm saying? Right. And also based on the type of lawyer that I had at two yeah. at the same yeah. time, you know? Yeah. Okay, so, yeah, I read about that, you had a gangster lawyer. Yeah, dude, yeah. You know what I'm saying? yeah. When I came home that same night, I mean, you know, I got hit with a whip, I got hit with the keys to the crib. You know what I'm saying? I was living on Biggie Block on Fulton and St. James in BK. Okay. You know, uh, and in less than four days, I had like about 100,000 cash in my hand. And I ain't even gonna say how much. You know right, what I'm saying? Right, right. You know what I mean? You know, mm -hmm. the, the, the other thing was, right, you know what I'm right. saying, how much all that was. But I had enough to be able to win back, to get back in the game and win. You know what I'm saying? Okay. You know, niggas know how it is, man. They know how I do it, man. I, I, had, I had many areas, many locations, and although, I was moving with the wrong product. I knew how to take care of my team, and I knew how to take care of my people. That's the thing was is that the kid from New London, we had a little altercation with him and everything. And I can really say this though because I caught the charge, I caught the case and everything else right. for it. Um, homie snitched on us, and 
part of the team got busted in a hotel for two keys. You know, um, me and KP, I believe, we got out. You know, and the other guys that was on the team, they wound up taking the case and they got locked up and all that, and they took their time. I saw the dude again at a party. Unfortunately, I was dancing with homie's girl. And in the course of me dancing with his girl, he entered, entered in, obviously. Later on, I guess, the next time I saw him, long story short, homie act like he had something wrong. I bought homie the business, had a full fifth, and he shot homie in his dick, you know what I'm saying? After that, you know what I'm saying, um, I got called for another charge, and then that Connecticut shit popped up on me with shooting on me. Um, fortunately enough, the case wound up, I got, I suppose I got an extradited, and through the course of the extradition, they didn't um, come and get me. They let the extradition, extradition like ride out. Mm -hmm. And when they did that, I just got a letter stating that the case was dismissed, it was dropped. I was just barred from the state of Connecticut for five years. Well, unfortunately, the height of my life was probably was the saddest time of my life, you know, because one, Danny wasn't there. You know, um, when I came home, I had, like, at some point, it was fun doing all that, you know, having my dude there with me, you know, but when I come home, it's like, although, you know, you always hear that, they're looking down at you, and, you know, they're in the heart and all that other good stuff, you know, with, the, with them not being there in the physical, it just wasn't the same. So when I came home, all I did was just try to, like, step my game up and just try to make certain things happen a certain way so I could be able to take care of certain people, you know, and then after that, it was like, wow, I mean, I stayed home 18 months once I got, got got acquitted for the murder charge, you know what I'm saying? 18 months, almost a year. And I had more than I ever had. Christmas is crazy, I mean, my last Christmas was 1990, and um, with all my family and friends, you know what I mean? You know, unfortunately, nobody knew that that was gonna be the last one. But the last one was a good one, you know what I'm saying? You know, everybody came out, we enjoyed ourselves, we had a good time. I went, I went crazy with it because nobody really knew as far as like a lot of the guys that was on the team knew that I had went to like both of my top cats and told them that I was tired. You know what I'm saying? I was ready to get up out the game. I felt like I had enough money to hold me down and start the businesses and do the things that I really wanted to do. So I was really trying to step away. And uh, you know, my way of giving back to my team and my family, I spent about like about a quarter of a mil, you know what I'm saying, for uh, 1990 Christmas alone, you know what I'm saying? So you know, that was that was just like, and, and, and that was that was nothing, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I get my family, I get my friends cake all the time, you know what I'm saying? But you know, that was just something, whereas I was just like, you know, yo, you know what? I'm tired, you know what I mean? It's over with, it, 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 it ain't the same no more, you know what I'm saying? No matter how, why I keep pushing something that, you know, it's not going to come back, you know what I'm saying? I'm never going to find a partner like Danny again. I don't want another partner if it's not Danny. So let me take what I got and let me bow out, you know what I'm saying? I was locked up for the whole 90s, okay. you know, pretty much like, you know, 90, I, I got locked up 91, February 12, 1991. And I didn't come home until 2004, right. you know, so I missed everything that, you know, everybody had. But when did you um, first meet Calvin Klein, like, how did you first meet him? Actually, um, I, I knew, I heard of Klein before I actually met him, you know. Um, we actually didn't meet until I was incarcerated. Mm -hmm. We was in MCC together, I think, and uh, must have been about 94. Mm -hmm. yeah, that was my first, uh, actually, opportunity when him and I actually acknowledged, you know, oh, okay. who, who, who either one of us was. Oh, okay. I, I'm sure he knew who I was and you know, right. who he was, but that was actually the first time we met when he was in jail. Okay, so with you having the magazine and everything, what, uh, inspires you to do the um, the uh, article on Calvin Klein that you did because you had a nice full piece up in there about him. I read it that I read. Um, like I said, I knew who he was uh, prior to getting incarcerated. And the concept of the magazine actually came four or five years after that. Oh. But him and I stayed in contact throughout the whole time we was incarcerated. You know, we uh, we actually never did time in the same facility. Uh, MCC is like a, um, when you first get arrested, it's, it's the federal building downtown in Manhattan, and that's pretty much where you go, all depending on what borough you're from. They got, right. And in bad fact, back then, that was the only building that um, that the feds had in New York City, which right. was MCC. Now they have NBC and MCC. Mm -hmm. But anyhow, when you first get arrested, um, that's where all, all all of the people who get arrested you end up at. Right. So him and I, like I said, met in '94, and, a, and a, uh, the existence of the magazine didn't actually come into play to '99. So from that time to that time, we just stayed in contact with each other. And when the concept of the magazine came, 
Um, obviously, he was the type of individual that portrayed in Don Diva, and, 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 and we hit it off, and, and he's always been a well-spoken kind of dude, so I knew he could share some insight with the reader, so uh, he was one of our earlier stories, as a matter right. of fact. Like, we had maybe 20, issue 25 now, and I think the story on Calvin was in issue 8. So actually, he did the story while he was still incarcerated as well as I. So yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. How long have you like known Klein? Hmm. I've known Klein since I was 17, and I met Klein because I used to run with his brother Savior. Mm -hmm. That was like my, my older brother. Right. And um, you know, they 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 never really really did what they was doing together, but they all you know they looked out for each other like that. Right. So I met him through his older brother. But we've been cool since I know. That's my name. So like, I did his bed with him. <laughs> oh, okay. Y'all never was in the um. Y'all didn't. Y'all ain't from the same neighborhood, so. No, nah, no. Nah, I'm from Crown Heights. He's from right up. But um, okay. you know, we we all were the Brooklyn niggas who went uptown right. and hung out with right. uptown niggas. We were the Brooklyn niggas who who did what we did. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? And um, you know, we're the same circle, of course, because exactly. we're all from Brooklyn. Right. So it was a mutual respect for all niggas from Brooklyn and all crews of Brooklyn. Right. Once you get out of Brooklyn. You know, in Brooklyn you got your own, you know, little little, you know, hood big hood hood, right. hood against hood yeah. beef. But once you get out of out of the world, you all the same crew. Yeah, you're the same crew. Yeah, like everybody thought it was crazy that me and um me and Savior was so tight. Oh, because he's from Red Hook and I'm from Crown Heights. Yeah, like I'm cool with Demencio and Lou and oh. Jesus and all these niggas, and then I'm at the same time I'm cool with Klein and uh -huh. and Red. I right. mean, and I'm um, Saving. Right. So like, what would you like during the time Klein was like? I would say like getting his having his reign at that time. You know what I'm saying? Like, where were you at? And like, did you like in that in that period of time? Well, we know you was DJing and you was doing your thing. Yeah. And you was rising. You know right. what I'm saying? On another level. You know what I'm saying? Like, did did you ever speak to him during that time? Or, oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 You have to understand. Like, um, we was all in the streets at the same okay. time. Right. So, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm doing a DJ thing and, you know, people, I'm getting popular for that. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, like, it, 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 you, back in the days, if you was a good DJ and you had any respect, everybody wanted to know you. Mm -hmm. So, like, it wasn't a want to know me for him because he was like family. So, right. like, we just knew each other. That's what it was. Like, right. And it, it almost felt like he was my little brother mm -hmm. because I was with his big brother. Right. You know what right. I'm saying? So, He's only months older than me. Okay. You know what I'm saying? We came up same we almost the same age and mm -hmm. you know, we're from the same era. Right. So we was always cool with each other. Okay. What would you say like the type of person Klein is like? Uh now? Klein's mm -hmm. Klein's Klein's a a totally different person than he was before he went in, which is lucky for a lot of niggas. <laughs> Right, so you know how you, how, okay, so you know, because you know both sides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Klein, you, you have to understand one thing, though. Like, I know what he's been, cap what he was capable of, and I know what he did, and I know, you know, I know what he's, yeah. what, what he, like, his, he put in his work if he had to put in his right. work. But, like, I never, ever had to see that side of him because he was my man. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, still now, he's my man. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It, it's not going to change. We family. Mm -hmm. So... I could sit here and tell you about how many things that he's done to prove that he's real, but right. like, yeah, it never ever affected me. It never marred my surface because we were the same crew. We were the same right, people. Right. So like, since you knew you knew him and he was doing his thing and you were doing your thing, it's like y'all never y'all just now like since he came home y'all meet again like you know because y'all yeah, went well, through different ways. In yeah, life, but like, wow. the, the thing is though, like during his bid, like for the last. Four years of his bed, it was me and him on the phone every day. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? Like the last two years, of, when Savior came home, me and Savior really didn't do the phone that much when he was in jail. When he came home, he came right to me, and we was together, and that was that. Oh. But like, you no, know, during Klein's last three years, three to four years, mm -hmm. it was me and him on the phone every day, preparing them to come home, oh. letting them know that, you know, these niggas is different. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Don't expect nothing when you come home. Just you know what I'm saying? Come home and do what you got to do. Don't expect nothing. If it happens, it's all good. If it don't happen, it's still all good. Right. So you know about um, clients like ben business ventures and things like that with right. Akon. What do you, you know, like, did you 
is that like uh, the norm for Klein, like being jumping into his things and getting in his business and doing his thing? Like, well, Klein, Klein, not at all. Like, Klein is super hustler. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, he he will get it and he will figure out how to get it and he will not just uh, sit back and not have when mm -hmm. he wants to have. He's used to living a certain way, so. When he came home, he wanted to get right back in that. But of course, you know, I had already acknowledged him that shit was very different. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it may have been a different way. And, you know, a lot of people showed him love because mm -hmm. his legend right. in Brooklyn is pretty serious. Right. You know? When he first started, like, what was, what, did you, did he, like, use you as an inspiration to do his, to do his thing? Because you was before him. Yeah, it's funny how you say that because um, I had a, a long conversation one time about my brother with my, with my mother, you know what I'm saying? And, and she, you know, she never really wanted my brother doing nothing at all, you know what I'm saying? But what he was going to do, go to school, do whatever he's going to do. So I promised her I wasn't going to be like, you know, like um, putting him involved with what I do. So I, you know, that was kept my word. But he, you know, he got his own mind. He wanted to do what he do, you know what I'm saying? And I, I mean, I'm not much, I'm not going to say too much about a lot of things, but, right. you know, some things everybody know that you will know already, that's right. what you can get from me, but, you know, he, he, he wanted to do what he do, and I, you know. Okay, so, like, when he came up and he did what he did, like, you know, he reclaimed his hood back, like, he took, he took his project back, did that, like, impress you, or you was like, damn, you know, is he, is, is it nigga bugging or whatever? You know, you found out that he had his crew and he was doing his thing. He shot up. He shot up there so fast with him, messing with Danny and the whole nine. You know what I'm saying? Like, what was your reaction to that? Like, when your man, when his name started ringing, because, you know, his name was ringing bells, still ring bells, though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, in some ways, I kind of, like, I felt that, I felt, I felt good that, you know what I'm saying, that he was being, you know, recognized for what he did. But in the same sense, of if that's because that's my brother, that's not like a, a person. Like I know a lot of niggas, yo, that's my brother. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's not really your brother. That's not your your blood. You know, this is my blood. So when you look at your blood and he, they talking that, you know what comes with with the territory. And I didn't want him to be involved with all that shit anyway. And it right. was just too stupid to me. You know, what yeah. saying? To, to to sit down and, and 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 break bread with him and feel like we don't have a future together or whatever. But right. it was just, you know, it just I know. The question is no, I wasn't feeling good about it at first. You know what I'm saying? As it went on and I noticed that he was trying to make a, a difference, you know what I'm saying, more so than uh, uh, just being an ass like everybody like other niggas that I know, you know what I'm saying? Because I've been in the game a long time, you know, different things. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm not I'm not just into one thing. So right. I just move around a lot. So, you know, just to see things going on like that, I just was paranoid. You know, I didn't know what was gonna happen. So just took it what it was, you know? Yeah, because it definitely blew up, like, you know what I'm talking about? Like, and, uh, you know, during the time, like, I know he was doing his thing, and then he took a fall, and he went to penitentiary, like, and when he came, you know, did you stay in touch with him a lot during the time of being in penitentiary, and what advice did you give him, like, when he was coming home? Because one thing Clark said, Clark said he used to talk to him for, like, four years, like, you know what I'm saying? He was, like, telling him, like, yo, the, 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 the caliber of cats out here ain't like it was before you can't you know you know did you like coach him he was my co-defendant you know what i'm saying okay. we both we all went the we all went the way together me him and my other co-defendant okay god bless the dead you know what i'm saying cream you know what i'm saying uh -huh. you know say much love to him you know what i'm saying he didn't want to listen to, to what i was telling him I, like i said when we got locked up and um and and we went our separate ways because we all, you know what I'm saying, and when you get in the feds, they don't see, sit y'all together. You don't have the luxury of just right. meeting with each other, staying with each other, but you'll run into each other. And you might stay with them for six months, you might stay with them for a year, you might not stay with them at all. So I was unfortunate I couldn't get with him because he was over there getting in trouble. I was over there trying to get out of trouble because I had a family trying to get back out to my kids. And he was, you know, he was doing what he do. He just had to, you know, to carry that torch, you know what I'm saying, because my torch was burning. You know yeah. what I'm saying? He realized my torch was burning and I wasn't wasn't fired up no more and I was talking like going back home and, and just, you know, being with my kids and, and being with this, you know, this knucklehead, you know what I'm saying? But, you know what I'm saying? And then I just definitely didn't, you know, coincide for what he did. The game started, you know, the game, right. the game recognized game and, and I didn't recognize game no more and I just right. wanted to get out of the game. And he didn't want to, you know, he didn't want to like give up the game, you know what I'm saying? So I had to try to give him some advice about how to move. So when he, I talked to him on the phone sometimes, he told me like, Yo, his dreams is to come out, to get with the music. Him and, him and Karn's gonna do their thing. Um, Jay, 
you know, it was a thing with Jay, and you know what I'm saying? Because I was doing my thing with the clubs and all this stuff, and, and the hit of Jay and my brother gonna do their thing. I just was like, yo, I'm just gonna fall back and just, you know what I'm saying? I'm going, you know, I ain't gotta do nothing no more. I can just watch how Jay gonna, you know, bring him, you know, bring him back, you know, yeah. to where he need to be, you know what I'm saying? Right. But I understand Jay, you know, what he do, what he do, and he do what he do. That's right. how I go. You know what I'm saying? Everybody gotta step up their game. And, you know, Jay stepped his game up, Calvin stepping his game up, so, you know, they'll meet each other. You know, people meet each right. other at the levels they get in, you know? Right. You know, you get in where you fit in. Right, definitely. So, like, like speaking uh, about the music shit, like, when he came home, like, and he got with Khan, and you see him blossom now, like, you know, we doing a documentary on him, you know, he down with Convict, you know what I mean? He getting into the other things, like, he's getting, trying to have a movie coming out, you know what I'm saying? Like, I know you seen him make a whole metamorphosis, like from from the old client and coming home and doing his thing. Like, how you feel about him getting with Khan and, and things like that? You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I met I, I met Khan a couple of times, man. That's man, he's a good dude. I mean, I, funny thing you said that. Um, I really when he was talking about it, I just was hearing it, but I didn't see nothing, so I didn't really see the guys. You know, I didn't really see Khan. I didn't see them, so I didn't really because he was down south and I was in New York and I really wasn't back and forth like that doing what I'm doing. So when you know Thanksgiving came around, you know we all went out there. The whole family went out to down south to my mother's house, and Con was out there. You know what I'm saying? And Con, him and my brother and me, Con always went out. And, and I, then I really noticed that what he was saying was he was really, you know, not just you know, this game is. is you got a lot of niggas that's a part of the movement and all the movement. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to know was he a part of the movement? You know what I'm saying? And right. when I got with him and Con, and I realized how Con was really trooping with him. And one nigga wasn't, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, and that's basically what it was. And he just, you know, he did his thing. He's doing his thing. I'm kind of like, yeah, right, right. proud of that. You know, at least that's blessful. You know what I'm saying? Right. We not niggas that's a thing of the past. Because if I was a thing of the past, I wouldn't be wearing what I wear now. Right. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I could take off my ring, my watch, and my chain. That's probably more than what niggas got in the last 13 years I've been away. You feel what I'm saying? And I ain't even this type of nigga. I ain't crazy flashy and flamboyant with what I do. Right. Because I don't have to. As long as I can go in my pocket and pull out what I got in my wallet, I'm good. You know, everybody thought I was going to come home and it was going to be a Calvin Klein and a Jay-Z story. Right. You know, um, Jay's a good dude. You know what I mean? You know, um, I can pretty much say that I learned a lot from coming home you know, and having a few conversations with him. Mm -hmm. And pretty much, I do what I do. You know what right. I mean? It's like, when help come, my help my help came from somebody who I least expected it, you know what I'm saying, which was, was Akon. I don't need Jay-Z right now. You know what I'm saying? I haven't called in to request a Jay-Z favor. You feel what I'm saying? So I don't know whether Jay-Z is willing or even interested in doing anything for me. Right. You know? I mean, it's a lot of questions of people that have where they might go, yo, Klein, I thought that, you know, when you came home, it was going to be about you and Jay. Mm -hmm. Or I thought that, you know, Jay left Dane because Klein came home and it's going to be a Klein and Jay-Z, you know what I'm saying, like Brooklyn takeover, you know what I'm saying, type shit. You know what I'm saying? And, like, where it's like, a lot of stories is what it is, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, I mean, I can get on the phone and make a, a phone call and holler at Jake and, you know, have a meeting with him and, you know what I'm saying, you know, if it makes sense to both of us because he's a grown man. I'm a grown man, you know. I mean, he's really ahead of the game, you know what I mean, after 13 years of my being away, you know. And at the end of the day, whatever help, if he did give it, that's our business. Right. You know, right. but I will tell you this though, my help come for Acorn. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have to tip my hat off to where my help come from, right. and where my help has came from. <coughs> you know, day one out the door, Acorn been in. You know what I'm saying? It's like you know, I'm convict music to the heart, to the fullest. You know what I'm saying? Like straight gangster with it. So what's up, man? How, how long you knew Clyde for? Clyde, my name from way back. All right. All right. <laughs> we don't even put time on it, man, because time really don't matter no more. Okay. We've been casting on each other 15, 20 years, man. We on each other within five minutes. Yeah, that's ugly. It's, about, it's really about family, loyalty, 
Mm-hmm. And just doing what you gotta do to survive amongst each other. You know what I'm saying? But, but don't ever put time and strength on a relationship. Because time really means nothing. It's really the, 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 the belief in you, you know, it's the people that you with. The love that you have for each other, the loyalty that you have for each other. That's the only thing that really matters. Time means nothing, man. For real, for real. So. Okay. So, um, what part does he play in convict music? I mean, Klein is like, he came out of convict. You know, okay. when we first started out this whole situation, it was about all of us that's trying to get out and make a difference in what we was doing, period. And he's just one of those niggas that came up with the family since forever. Was a pioneer, held this whole thing down, came back out to try to recover it but more on a positive level. So he was definitely the spokesperson of comic music and what we try to do. He is comic music as, as far as I'm concerned. You know what I'm saying? He represented to the fullest as it could be. I just represent him on a talent level, pretty much. He's the OG of comic music. Okay. You know what I'm saying? All right. So, so, so that's what, um, that's how that came about, being in that video, Soul Survivor? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, the whole purpose of, it was a subliminal message. You know what I mean? I survived my whole thing in a whole different way. Like, when I really put that record out, that was supposed to be my first single off the second album. You know, Jeezy just happened to be one of the brothers that happened to ride through this whole situation I wanted to make see happen, and he asked for a record at the time, so I felt like I would never give him nothing less than what I would give myself. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So, I definitely sacrificed that record to help his career, and he could help me at the same time, because he had the southern streets that I, I definitely thought I felt like could, that I could use, that I needed. Yeah. So we both, we definitely helped each other in both, in that, in, that, in that aspect, you know what I'm saying? At the same time, he was more like a brother to me too, like he's a real, real down to earth, genuine yeah. real nigga, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. he's a real nigga for real, for real, so, yeah. you know, just the combination of it just naturally happened, but me having Klein on the driver's side, it was definitely a subliminal message on the fact that how he came to the whole situation and survived it. Okay. On a whole nother aspect. That was just like his life story on film by accident. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And yeah. mine in a lot of different ways. So it was like we walked through the same paths, pretty much wore the same shoes coming up. So it was like, there's no way I would be doing a video like that. My man Klein out and I don't have him in the video to, to pretty much subliminally, you know, tell his story. Okay. You know what I mean? Basically, my relationship to the Don of Brooklyn is a relationship where Sonny from the movie Bronx Tale, if you're familiar with it, how he raised C and had C get two educations. I'm an epitome of a person who went and pursued my education as far as in the streets, but also academically. I graduated from college and did things of that nature all due to the man Calvin Klein. And what I want people to get out of this to know that his legacy shouldn't be built on what was done in the streets. The legacy should be built on the things that he did today, and you are also judged on what comes from that. What people who have arose from your litter is not just street niggas, it's also niggas who's in corporate America who are making choices and decisions and doing the right thing as far as trying to help the youth and to build communities from which we come from, which are impoverished and financially paralyzed. And Klein is just a person that came out of that community who happened to hustle, but also he hustled to help and to save people. And the same thing goes into what people do in corporate America. We wasn't given these same opportunities. Some make it, some don't. But at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? The gift is a gift and a blessing for him to be here today to tell his story, to share with it with others. Even when Klein was in prison and we contacted each other, the first thing he told me he wanted to do was take over the entertainment industry, come on music, came on MTV, and the same rules that he applied within the streets, he doing it in a positive direction. On MTV, one week after being incarcerated, that's Calvin Klein. That's the Klein that I know. That's Calvin Baker, the person who really cares about the underdogs and who really live by morals and integrity, which you can't find today. You know, I want people who watch this to just embrace a street legend who's here today with us, because most street legends are either dead or in prison or rats who should not be acknowledged. He's neither of the three. He's here today. My son is still alive, here to tell his story and to help others. And those same rules is going to be applied to making millions in this music and entertainment industry, real estate, everything that the Don chooses to do, because this is the person that everyone should focus on. And just in that light, we should see 
you know what I'm saying? The kids can see where they can go from there. So Klein inspired you to go to school? He inspired me to go to school. He, he talked to me about the importance of, hey, getting an education and yo, do not let anyone tell you that you can't do it, to keep your head up and to stand as a man. And he told me one thing about leaders follow leaders, and that stuck with me to this day. You know what I'm saying? Just the ability to lead people in the right way, to lead people and to guide them and to assemble a team of people to, to for good. So, so, and what, and what, and, and the jewels that you got from him, basically, some of is what you're using today, and it got you where you, some of it got you where you are now. You got a good job, and you know, you might tell him about, what, you know, what you do. Well, you know what I'm saying? Basically, right now, you know, I'm working for a Fortune 500 company, making good money, and you know what I'm saying? And with that, my thing today is to give back. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not, I'm making money and I ran from the community. I'm still a part of the community to share that and to give these kids Jews as far as the Jews that was given to me because the Jews don't belong to you. When someone give you the Jews, you have to make sure you pass it down and don't keep it for yourself and make sure that next generation can come up and have the same sort of different outcomes than what others have had in our community. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, and you from Red Hook? And I'm from Red Hook, okay. you know, and I'm from that community, man. I'm a, I'm a pillar of Red Hook, Brownsville, all the communities that with people turn their back on, what they look at and they say, hey, you can't make it from there. But I just want people to know, man, like, Yesterday is history, tomorrow is a mystery, today is the present, which is a gift. And we have to take advantage of the present, which is today, and continue to strive and to let y'all know you can't make it out of these communities. You can't come home. What Klein did was not let prison break him. He came home and applied everything that he did in the streets and applied that today within corporate business. And he could run a Fortune 500 company with given that opportunity. I just want people who see this to know, like, you don't have to shy away from the Calvin Kleins of the world. Diamonds direct from manufacturing from overseas. See, I just made that piece for Klein, Calvin Klein, Brooklyn Don. I'm just waiting for him to come and pick it up. I can't wait, you know, for him to take a look at it. I know he's going to love this right here. Mm -hmm. details. Oh, so that's not the first one you made for him, is it? Because he was telling me he had a smaller one, but that don't look small. Yeah, that's well, looking well, real I, big right I there. Had, I had this right here, oh, but I haven't made that. I don't do this kind of job like somebody else made. That was way before he met me. Oh, okay. So when he met me and I seen him wear this, I was like, Nah, man, I can't. You can't be fucking with me if you're wearing this. I gotta make it. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta make it my shit right there. What a difference, my brother. job. What a difference. You see. This way, you know, anybody asks, like, I'm what sure everybody's gonna that? have. That's a Franco chain, that's a new round cube chain. Uh, that's been pop very popular right here. All right. And yellow, that's a two-tone job. It's not easy to do that. You don't have one, one, um, this is white gold, yellow gold, white gold, and yellow gold. If you know about jewelry, you know it's not easy to make. So, so what is that? Yellow diamonds? What is that? That's yellow diamonds right there. Can, yellow canaries. Oh, that's what that is? That's what oh. that is. How many, yellow canaries. how many diamonds you got up in there? Over, over 2,000 over 2, diamonds set in here. The, the labor wasn't cheap. Damn. It's very expensive. You, you got about a total of almost 40 carats in here. Damn. About okay. 38 carats. Black, they gonna like, right there. Of course. Like, like, you know, we black work, diamonds. We work with a lot of them. There you go. What up, Klein? What's up, what's up, what's up? What's yeah, good? man, we were good. waiting here for what's a minute, good? man, for you to come through. What's good? That's what's up. That's what's up. Uh, uh, that's what's up. What's good, man? What's good? What's good? Everything's good. What's good? What's good? Like a frozen man. <laughs> you ready, man? Wow. Wow. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Come on, Tom Vick. You know what it is. Uh, real talk. Talk uh, to New York. Did yeah, you notice how he did the handcuffs for you on there? Yeah, I see it, man. I see it. It's a big look right here. Uh, it's a good look. I ain't crazy about jury, though, man, but you know you got to have a collection. Uh, Even if you're not crazy about it, you still got to have a collection. You know? 
Oh, we ain't even gonna talk to you about this, this shit I'm getting made. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> 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 we ain't gonna it's talk to you about this shit. See, I came naked though, but don't get it twisted. <laughs> it's in the safe. I got some other shit getting made right now. <laughs> I forgot to give him his tip. I forgot to give him his tip. My bad. My bad. My bad. My bad. My bad. My bad. <laughs> Everybody had their turn to talk about me. Everybody had their turn to live off of me. Now it's my turn to live off of me and bring back to my hood. You know? Red Hook put a lot of work in out here, man. We put a lot of work in Brooklyn, period. You know what I'm saying? And this ain't this ain't no joke. We ain't playing no games. This is serious. Yeah, I just found out on the low that Carmelo Anthony played his first game out here. The first thing I told the youngster told me that he got to get me his number because I got to tell Carmelo. I got to say, yo, Carmelo, come on. They need you back here, man. The NBA is great, kid, but they need you in this hood. They need to know that that greatness came from right here. And that's the problem. See, so many of us forget that who the first person gave us the ball. We keep remembering the last person who handed it to us. This was usually our college coach. We got to remember that first person in the hood. It could be a drug dealer, could have been a pimp, could have been a player, could have been a Mac man, could have been somebody playing a shot game. Whoever gave you that first ball, whoever gave you that first break, whoever gave you that first shot, you got to remember that. You got to come back to that because can't nobody make a difference in our hood if we don't. We got to be the ones to make the difference. We got to be the ones to create the laws. We got to be the ones to make youngsters understand that it ain't about the life of crime, that it's about education, not incarceration. We got to make youngsters understand they value when they know they value. It'll be hard if you to take somebody else's life because the only way to not take somebody else's life and, and destroy their value is to know your value. If you know your value, it'd be hard to take somebody else's life. But we got to educate them, make them know that, man, so they can put the clip down Put your trigger down, put the burner down, and pick up the book, man. Because there ain't no way we're going to survive this without education. And you're going to get education anyway. You're going to get it out here or you're going to get it in the joint. Trust me. Before it's over, you're going to have to get it. So you may as well get out here, kid, and learn how to play the game and not let the game play you. One. That's what's up, man. Calvin Klein, a Brooklyn dog, man. Your boy, Calvin Klein, in the house. Rock, rock, Brooklyn, yo, Put it on, put it on, put it on. Put it on. Put it on. Oh, round 31. Put it on. Round 31. Ah, chop. Hey, chop. Yeah. Go, 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 go. One hand, y'all. One hand. Go, go. Thank <laughs> you. 
Yeah. 